Politics, business, and religion. We discuss the topics you avoid at the dinner table, bringing you the biggest names in Texas politics and beyond. This is the Trey Blocker Show. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Trey Blocker Show. Today, we are honored to have in our studio State Senator Angela Paxton from Collin County, Texas. Senator, thanks for coming on the show. Well, thrilled to be here. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. And today is Valentine's Day, so... First of all, happy Valentine's Day. Thank you, you too. But it's also your birthday, so happy birthday. Thank you very much. Uh, and you know, when we were, when you came in this morning, we were talking about Valentine's Day and your birthday, and it made me wonder because uh, my staff put it on my notes that today was your birthday, mm-hmm. and I thought, you know what, I wonder if her husband, Attorney General Ken Paxton, uh, gets a pass somehow on the fact that it's your birthday and Valentine's Day, <laughs> or if he has to double up. So what's what's the answer to that? Well, first of all, I'm quite a bargain, aren't I? So, <laughs> you know, and, and secondly, you have great staff to, yes, uh, to no add doubt. that to no add doubt. your notes. But, you know, in all fairness, uh, full disclosure, I will say it's like God, God didn't make me take too much of a hit that he didn't uh, do evenly with Ken on, on the uh, doubling up because Ken's birthday is actually December 23rd. Right. I'd rather have a double birthday on Valentine's than be doubled up with Christmas. I agree. Uh, I totally think he agree. got the short end of the stick most of the time on sure. his birthday. But yeah. uh, no, I mean, I, I think Ken has always made it a point to go big and, uh, and all on my birthday. So. Yeah, that's good. Well, so you were telling me the story about, you're talking <laughs> about going big. Uh, for your birthday what a couple years ago he took you to the Grammys he did it was kind of a surprise and uh, he told me to you know bring my fancy clothes and uh, anyway we flew out to to uh, California I guess it was in LA right and um, it was on the 13th okay so you know we get out there we met someone for lunch uh, at a beautiful restaurant outside you know the weather was great Mm. Um, we got all dressed up and went to a pre-party Then we went to the Grammys, and it was Adele, and it was Carrie Underwood and Keith Urban, and just everyone, right? Yeah. Um, They did the big tribute to George Michael that year. Um, And I love music, Mm -hmm. and uh, Ken knew that. And so it it was a a great evening, and then we went to the after party. And anyway, you know, went back to the hotel, crashed for a few hours, and then we got up on the the really early flight, and we're Mm -hmm. heading to the airport to get back home. Uh, to the Dallas area, to McKinney, where we live. Right. Anyway, Ken looks at me, and uh, again, you know, that was on the 13th, so this is the morning of the 14th, which is Valentine's right. Day and my birthday. So he said, how's this going for your birthday? And I said, you're off to a really good start. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. anyway, he, he uh, he's like, oh, shoot. And so anyway. He, you mean I got to do more? Yeah, he kind of did, cram- <laughs> did a scramble uh, and, uh, and um, got in touch with someone that, Actually, uh, a friend of his who was a, a manager at Capitol Grill, I think, in, in yeah. Plano, right. and uh, she interned for him a long time before, and he called her, and he's like, I need a favor. <laughs> and so, anyway, she's like, I'm there for you, and, and she pulls off, uh, you know, uh, dinner. He's like, can I get, uh, can I get um, a reservation for two? And she's like, sure, when? He's like, tonight. <laughs> she's like, tonight's Valentine's Day. Yeah, yeah. are you crazy? So, I know, and... She's like, well, okay, I think I can do that. What time? He's like, seven. <laughs> anyway, she pulls it off. And, That's uh, amazing. Uh, for him. So teamwork. Right. Right? Right. You never know who can come through <laughs> to help you out later on. Be and, nice to people. Right? That's true. And you didn't know at the time that he was having to pull all those strings. No, so. I, I, I found all of that out uh, kind of later on. So it was funny, though. We, uh, we saw some other friends uh, that were celebrating uh, right. Valentine's Day there right. that evening. And, you know, we talked to them. Ken told me later that he had leaned over to one of the guys and he said, when, when did you get your reservations for mm-hmm. tonight? And they're like, six months ago, of yeah, course. Anyway, absolutely. So I think it was kind of by the skin of his teeth, but it was a lot of fun. <laughs> we, it was, and it, it sure was memorable. Right. Well, Capital Girl in Plano on Valentine's Day, I would imagine that's a hard place to get into. It is. I doubt we'll be able to pull it off this year. <laughs> no, I doubt it. <laughs> Plus, we're not there. Well, that's Probably true. Enough, we're both here in Austin. So, so big plans for tonight? Capital Girl here in Austin? So um, I don't know. Ah. What I know is that after lunch, 
Ken is picking me up, and it is a mm. surprise. Oh, good. So good, he good. has always come through for me before, um, and I am certain that it will be worth my while. He sounds like a keeper. Yeah, he is. Yeah. <laughs> good. Yeah, he is. 32 years. 32 years. Congratulations. Thank you. That's, that's always a big milestone. Um, well, I'm going to ask you a random question since you just brought that up. 32 years. Um, we know the statistics these days in the modern era on divorce. Mm -hmm. What, in your mind, is the secret to success? Wow. You know, the grace of God. I saw a quote the other day, you know, on, I forget where it was, Hobby Lobby or something like that. And it said, the secret to a successful marriage uh, is two sinners who are good at forgiving. Mm, that's important. And, you know, I think, um, you know, life has its ups and downs. We have four children. Mm -hmm. uh, we're empty nesters now. Right. Uh, we we have certainly um, seen our share of peril in life. Right. And uh, we've we've gone through really great times. We've gone through you know devastatingly difficult times mm -hmm. together mm -hmm. uh, that no one would really even know. Sure. But um, you know when when we said I do, um, I mean that was a forever commitment. Right. It meant something. And, and I do think it's, it is so difficult uh, today with the, the pressures. And, and in political life, I think those, the ante is, is up even more. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I think it is, it is uh, something that you continually, um, you, have to, you have to remember what love means. Right. That love is not about receiving, that love is about what doing what's best for the for the other person mm -hmm. keeping that in mind but also remembering that um, without the grace of God that everything is harder than what we can do that's right well we need strength through him to make it through those tough times uh, and if you're not looking to him for that then you're probably looking in the wrong place and might not find solutions absolutely yeah. I'm so thankful for the grace of God for the love of God and you know, actually, I think it is when when you're going through really difficult times, you really start to understand the depth of the love of God. Mm -hmm. That's right. You know? That's right. Well, that's when we appreciate Him the most, mm -hmm. right? For sure. So you are a freshman state senator, yes. uh, married to the attorney general of the state of Texas, yes. who was prior to that a state senator mm -hmm. and prior to that a state representative. Mm -hmm. So one who is cynical about politics might say to you, you should have known better. So what motivated you to, to run? Well, I should have known better. I think that <laughs> I would agree with them 100%. You know, I think um, there are a lot of different motivations people have for running for office. Right. Uh, when, when I got into the race, uh, actually one of the things as I was meeting with people initially um, in particular, elected officials in Collin County and in, in SD8. Uh, SD8 is in North Texas. Mm -hmm. McKinney, Allen, Frisco, Plano, Richardson, uh, Wiley, Lucas, Parker, um, some of the more rural parts, but, um, you know, and some of North Dallas. So about 85% is in Collin County, right. where we've lived for 22 years. Mm -hmm. We moved there to help start a church and raise our family. Right. And, um, you know, it's... It's um, a, and a little bit of, of Dallas County and North Dallas. But one of the things I, I did when I started was, uh, as I was looking for support from the elected officials in the in the the area, many of whom are longtime friends of ours, right. and many of whom we actually encouraged to run for office. Uh, so I, I asked that question: Why did you run? Mm. And it was kind of interesting to me. There were really two answers that things kind of distilled down to, um, there were some people that they'd just always been interested in politics. Right. And um, it was something they'd always wanted to do. Ken is someone like that. Um, you know, when, when Ken and I met as students at Baylor University, he was student body president. Ah. Uh, which is why I went out with him because, you know, <coughs> he was He was, a, the, he was the big dog president. on right. campus, right? Yeah. yeah. And then, of course, that, <laughs> the, you know, the rest is history because sure. he swept me off my feet. Right. Um, but you know, Ken always loved politics, and and he was a person that wanted to make a difference 
um, that was, I think, one of the things that really drew us together. Mm -hmm. You know, that was something he'd always wanted to do because he wanted to make a difference in that way. Right. And um, so a lot of the people that I talked with were, were like that. They'd always kind of been interested in politics and just were interested in running for office. Um, the other sort of person that I talked to, though, um, really is, describes kind of what happened with me. And it was, um, you know, people that said, you know, I'd not ever thought about it. And someone approached me and said, we think you should do this. Mm. We think you're the right person for this. That's right. what that's what happened with me. Right. So I tell people never in my wildest dreams or darkest nightmares would I have <laughs> ever thought I was going to run for office. Sure. But I've always believed it's important right. that we need good people right. in office. And that's why I was so willing to kind of take the hit and make the sacrifices that it takes as a family to support Kent. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that that put me kind of in the role of a single mom a lot of times. We have right. four children. Right. And uh, our kids were three, five, seven, and nine when uh, Ken ran for office the first time. Yeah, that's going to be tough. So, but it mattered. And I knew it mattered. And I also knew that he was called to it. We both believed that. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, and I think that's the other thing underneath it is, you know, I mean, we all know there are people who, who are drawn to this because of power. That's right. But I think for us, uh, we've both been drawn to it in, in, from different angles. But because it gives us the opportunity to influence and make a difference. And, you know, I did that for 22 years as an educator. Mm -hmm. I was a teacher, um, taught high school math, and then I was a guidance counselor. Right. And that is why, um, it, to me, I have the same mission I always had, which is to change the world, to make a difference. Right. Um, it's just the mechanism has changed. Sure. So. Deciding to run for office is one thing, and wanting to serve uh, is a laudable goal, but the campaign trail is, can be really tough and vicious, so how did, how did you deal with that? Well, that's, that's certainly one area where, I mean, I did go into this eyes wide open. Mm -hmm. and Because you had seen it before seen through it. Ken's races. And, you know, I had, <coughs> I had walked through with Ken, um, you know, tough, tough races, and, uh, you know, he ran for speaker. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, if you're going to shoot at the king, you better kill him. And, and he didn't. <laughs> right. right. I remember that. Yeah. That was the year he, you know, I, I was on the lawn care committee or something like that, I think, in the house. <laughs> and all. But, you know, um, we, we, we did that because we felt like it was the right thing to do. And, you know, it, it's interesting. Um, that was a really difficult experience for Ken. Mm -hmm. um, in the relationships in Austin, it was difficult for both of us because right. you kind of go from here to here. And you, and you find out who your friends are, right? Well, and that's important. I remember actually getting a sense of that, that, you know what? This matters because we know who our friends really are. That matters. Mm -hmm. That matters for now. Right. That matters for the future. Right. We could never have imagined how, right? But he went from that, which was kind of a devastating defeat, to two years later running um, uncontested for the Texas Senate, mm -hmm. and then two years later, uh, you know, becoming Attorney General of Texas. Amazing turn of events from, from the failed run for speaker to being the Attorney right. General of Texas. So, so you know, I, I, I watched that. We knew that um, in, my, in my primary, it was going to be probably brutal, mm -hmm. uh, expensive, and, and kind of nasty. Right. Uh, we knew that there'd probably be a lot of TV. Right. Um, and, and you know, it was, it, in the primary, it was not just aimed at me. It was also aimed at Ken. <laughs> um, and, and so, you know, I remember I looked at Ken when we, when we were making the decision up front. I said, I'm not willing to do anything that is going to make it worse for you. Right. And he said, this is the right thing for Collin County for SD8. Um, I can take care of myself. Let's do the right thing. Right. So we did. That's good. Nobody, nobody was a bigger supporter than Ken. I'm sure. So I, I suspect it's a little known fact that you are quite a talented guitar player and singer. Oh. So <laughs> did, did you bring that talent out on the campaign trail? Did that get you a bunch of votes or did you kind of not, not use you know, that tool? Uh, that, that's, that's so funny. I, I love to sing. I don't, I don't know that I would say I'm very talented. Uh, that's a... That's a Nice for you to say. I, I would say I'm very average. Um, I'm kind of a, 
uh, kind of good at a lot of things, right. not great at any of them, but sufficient, right? So my, my guitar certainly has come in handy. Uh, you know, I, I think, um, you know, I, I do think part of what that did for me, though, is that along the line, along the way, uh, as Ken served and campaigned, um, you know, that was something we always did together. He didn't mm -hmm. do it solo. And so I often introduced him at, at events. I often went to events that he couldn't go to. Um, and so, you know, I, I'll, I'll be honest, when we first started, um, again, talking about me running, one of the things that, that, that I said to him was, I said, Ken's no, no one's going to think of me seriously as a candidate. They're just going to say, you know, that's Mrs. Ken Paxton. Right. Uh, and, and Ken said, he goes, Ange, no one who knows you thinks of you that way. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I knew that was true. And so, you know, there are times where you have to just make a decision. People may think this, that, or the other. And I knew people would, would think that, oh, she's just trying to, That's right. you know, tag along on, on, uh, on his coattails and that sort of thing. But, but, you know, I knew that wasn't what was driving it. Mm -hmm. um, I knew it was going to be hard. That wasn't enough for me. Right. I, I had no ambition to do this. I did it because I felt like the district needed um, someone from there that was invested in the community that would really represent it because that's their home. Right. So. Yeah, absolutely. I think you did it for all the right reasons. Uh, I appreciate your humility on, on, the, on your musical talents, uh, but if you don't have some skill, you don't get invited to sing the national anthem at the Texas Rangers Stadium. So <laughs> tell, us about, tell us that story real quick. I grew up in church choir, um, and uh, I, you know, was always involved in church ministry, leading music, and, and that sort of thing. So I grew up singing in church, and um, something I love to do. Mm -hmm. uh, when when Ken and I got married, and um, actually when our when our kids were young, you know, that was something I continued to do, sing at church. I actually recorded a, an album of songs that I wrote and used right. to sing at churches um, early on. And then when we started having kids, that got harder to. To kind of manage but uh, Ken was always really supportive of, of me singing and all and um, anyway he encouraged me to uh, do kind of the big the first really big thing and he's like why don't you see if you could uh, you know sing at a sporting event I later figured out that there was really an ulterior motive because when you do that <laughs> you get free tickets and a parking pass oh okay so I'm, I'm, okay I, that may, may have had something to do with it. Uh -huh, uh -huh. but but you know the very first big break i had uh ken came home from a meeting with a group of guys that uh they were all they were all christians they were all guys that were interested in politics mm -hmm. uh, many of them went on to run for office uh, later on but they just wanted to be engaged in making a difference. Right. So he comes home from this monthly meeting with these guys and he says, you know, George W. Bush is gonna run for governor. And he was the owner of the Texas Rangers at the time and we lived in the, in the uh, Dallas area. Mm -hmm. He says, um, you're gonna sing the national anthem at his Dallas kickoff. Oh, wow. And uh, for, the, for the governor's <clears throat> race. And I'm like, okay. So I was, I was excited about that. I knew it was a great opportunity and it'd be neat. Um, and I said, when is it? And he says, you know, it's in, you know, uh, three weeks or whatever. And, um, and I'm like, okay, what time? And he says, 6 a.m. I'm like, do you hate me? <laughs> who, makes, who makes someone else sing the national anthem? Eh, it's kind of a rangy right. song. I don't care how much coffee you have. Exactly. All right. So anyway, he goes, oh, you'll do great, you know. And he goes, and you should do a good job because if you do, maybe he'll ask you to sing at a ranger game. Mm. And I'm like, okay, I'm just thinking, I just got to get up at oh dark 30 to uh, warm up, right? right? And we have little bitty kids. Anyway, so the time comes, um, you know, our neighbor comes over in the middle of the night to watch the kids for us, so we leave. And right. Anyway, I sing the national anthem. It goes well, apparently, because George W. w. Bush waves me over to his table uh, afterward, and he says, hey, how would you like to sing in front of 4,500 people? There you go. And, uh, so anyway, uh, 45,000 people, I don't know, however many people were It's in. a big stadium. It is, yeah. uh, and where the Rangers play. But anyway, I said I would love to. So um, anyway, of course, you know, Ken's like, check. <laughs> and uh, so he's excited. So anyway, uh, it, it actually turned out, though, that um, Ken was going to a game just a few nights before mine. 
And I said, get there early so you can scope it out and mm-hmm. tell me how that all right. goes down. And uh, he did. He comes home from the game. I said, well, so how'd it go? And he said, well, he said, the guy went out to the mound and puts the mic up to his mouth. And he said, and nothing happened. <laughs> oh, and no. I'm like, what do you mean? And he said, it was dead. He goes, I think the battery was dead. And so the guy didn't get to sing. And I'm like. You'd think they'd check that ahead oh, of time, right? Well, so. Uh, when I went, uh, the first thing we asked, so we're waiting down on the sidelines um, to go, and Ken said, is, is the mic going to work? And she goes, oh, my gosh, and I'm so lucky I still have a job, right? She said, I bet. she pulls out of her pocket. She's got like five uh, extra you know, batteries, nine volt batteries. But, <laughs> but the other thing that was funny was my night got rescheduled. And they had called me the week before, and they said, we're going to have to reschedule you. Uh, for this night because the night that you're singing we actually have a celebrity guest that's coming in mm. and and I'm like well you know these things happen and right so we we work out the details and I said I said by the way who who is the celebrity that's coming in and she said um meatloaf <laughs> <laughs> so that's oh, I, ha- I haven't heard that name in a long yeah, time so anyway I got bumped by meatloaf oh uh, boy but anyway it all worked out and it, it was a lot of fun and we did get we did get tickets in a parking pass so <laughs> so he got to go to the game again yeah, that was the first of that is too endeavors. funny so I got, you know some for the Mavericks um and, is that uh, not totally nerve-wracking to sing in front of a crowd that big you know, it's such a big venue. Mm-hmm. It's almost like you're there by yourself. I got gotcha. you. It's the kind of thing you just don't want to overthink. Right. You just go do it. Yeah. I got it. it. So you've been to the Capitol plenty of times over the years, but it's got to be different walking into that Senate chamber uh, as a state senator. Um, describe that feeling. Hmm. It's hard to describe. You know, I remember, again, the first time walking into the Capitol uh, with our children, together as a family, when we we all came to see Ken sworn in to the House the very first time. Mm-hmm. Again, our kids, little bitty, three, five, seven, and nine. Right. And walking through uh, the Capitol, and you look up on the walls, and you know they're the composite photos of you know, they're all men. They're, right. They all have these mustaches. That yeah, like from a hundred years ago. Yeah, right. From the 1800s, and you know, I remember walking through and looking at that, and just thinking, as a family, um, what an opportunity this was—a special thing to to be part of history. Mm-hmm. And and thinking, who gets to do this? Right. Um, wow. But, you know, then you, you fast forward to um, this, this past year. And uh, actually, Randy Samuelson, who's my chief of staff and who's in the studio right. uh, with us um, this morning, uh, he and I uh, walked to the Capitol to go, to go meet with someone and um, went, went through the, the Senate chamber to, to get there. And I remember, you know, because I didn't really know my way around. Mm-hmm. I remember following Randy into the Senate chambers, uh, Senate chamber, looking up at at the the beautiful door. Of course, the architecture. Of the right, Capitol and the chandeliers so and the gallery, and and we we step in to the back of the the Senate chamber, and Randy was moving on, and and I said, Randy, I need a moment, and uh, I just I just stood there, and um, I, I feel emotional remembering it. Yeah. Um, I I've, I've been in that in that room many, many times, Mm -hmm. and in the Capitol many, many times, but never in my own right. Mm -hmm. And to realize uh, that I I was going to have the opportunity to serve the people of Texas, to serve God, um, to serve, you know, the future Mm -hmm. as a teacher, you know, as a teacher. And I'm the, as I understand it, I've been told I'm the first uh, educator elected to the Senate in 25 years. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Last one was actually also from Senate District 8, Florence Shapiro. Yep, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. So let's let's talk about that. Obviously, there are two huge issues on, on the table this session, one being property tax reform, the other being school finance. And, and it seems right now that, you know, the House and the Senate and the governor, everybody's getting along, you know, 
Yeah, let's let's hope it continues and hope some good solutions come out of that uh, conversation. And I'm sure your uh, background will allow you to have some significant input into that. Uh, tell us what else you're working on. What else are you passionate about? Well, I mean, um, to, to that note, mm -hmm. uh, I, I do think this is going to be a very meat and potatoes kind of session. Right. I said Shangri-La. Um, I, I do think there's kind of a, a Camelot feel to the session right now. Absolutely. Um, people uh, on both sides of the aisle seem to be very focused on, you know, the people of Texas have sent us here to, to, to do two big things. The, the speaker knows it, the lieutenant governor knows it, and the governor knows it, and, and all of the members know it in both houses. Right. And that is property tax reform and school finance. I'm thrilled to be on the education committee, and I'm thrilled to be serving as vice chair on the newly created property tax committee. That's huge. So I'm looking forward to that, um, and, uh, and I, I, I do... I, I believe already I've been able to bring my viewpoint as a classroom teacher mm -hmm. um, and, a, and a school counselor uh, to those discussions. Uh, additionally, I'm on business and commerce, natural resources. Wow. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm great. I'm just, it's a great opportunity to make a difference on right. many levels. My, my master's degree is in education. So I got my undergraduate in mathematical science. So it's mm -hmm. a math computer science degree. Um, and I went back to school to get certified to teach and got my master's in education. But another area that I'm very, very interested in is IT, mm -hmm. uh, cybersecurity. And, um, you know, it looks like we're going to be carrying some of uh, the legislation that deals with privacy and um, updating um, the, the IT uh, backbone of, the, of, the st of state government in Texas, right. which is right. long overdue. And so those are important to me. Of course, I'm an, I'm, I'm an adopted child. Uh, I think you and I have talked about that before. Right. And so what I consider the life issues, um, which is not, not just the abortion issue, but adoption in general, foster care, mm -hmm. human trafficking to me is, a, is an issue that is just about the dignity of, of human life and the sacredness of human life. Um, the care of, of uh, the elderly, people with disabilities, all of those fall under that umbrella to me and, sure and those are very very important well i think you'd agree we have a, a moral obligation to take care of the least among us and unfortunately our our child protective services in the state and, and similar state programs have been woefully understaffed underfunded the the people who work there are overworked um, so how do we address some of those issues so that these the most vulnerable of our society especially kids mm -hmm. Are, are better taken care of when they're going through that system. Well, I know, um, you know, we we did do some things in the last legislative session to address um, salary for mm -hmm. um, people that work in that area. And my, my brother-in-law um, works in uh, social services in another state, and I know he and I've talked about that uh, about that issue. And you know, it's emotionally draining. Absolutely. Um, to work in that kind of environment um, in just difficult situations and so so often you know there are drugs involved mm -hmm. um, you know Abuse. these are not parents that set out to be bad parents they're you know I asked my brother-in-law one time I said if you had a magic wand and you could remove you know one terrible thing in the world that would make life better for all these kids mm -hmm. what would it be and he said uh, meth you know really just awful and he said you, you know people just it's so addictive, and of course, you know the op op opioid crisis right. is um, is part of that. And you know, I appreciate the work that Ken's office has done uh, on that front, mm -hmm. and also on human trafficking. Right, uh, the governor's office as well. So, I think though that really the the answer uh, is much deeper than government. We do have mm. to put resources toward it. But I was, uh, you know, with the number of, for example, foster kids that we have in in the system. We have more churches than we have foster kids. And I have wondered um, at times, you know, what if every church took on the goal of supporting a family? Right. Um, and coming around a family to adopt uh, a foster child. And many times that would be more than one, keep a family together, keep sure. siblings together. Right. Um, but I do think that this is, there are so many great opportunities for the church to step up 
and really be the hands and feet of Christ. Um, I think, you know, one of the things that has happened over the years is that, uh, you know, the church has allowed government to kind of take over some of the roles that the church traditionally filled. That's right. And I think we've, we're at a time when uh, government's not particularly good at caring. It, it's good at sort of supporting with resources in a, in a kind of bread and butter kind of way. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, but it's, you know, government is not the same as heart. That's the church. That's people right. that love people. Well, and I think to that point, the, the better solution is making sure people understand the problems that we have in the system and the number of kids in the system mm-hmm. and what happens to kids when they get booted out of that system when they turn 18 and have no one to turn to, right? right? And so I think if there's more awareness to the issue mm-hmm. and more awareness to the human trafficking issue, which, which I, I applaud General Paxton for bringing more attention to that issue because the general public, I don't think, is aware of, of the, the magnitude of these problems. Yeah. Right. Well, and, and um, I appreciate uh, Joan Huffman, mm-hmm. Senator Huffman, has um, has a number of bills that are related to human trafficking. And, um, you know, I I have just um, been able to sign on with her on uh, one in particular that will, um, you know, help train our um, police officers in, in some of the signs, make sure that when they come out of their initial training, right. that they are equipped in a better way, and as they seek higher certification, that we roll that training in. Because it really is true. I mean, so often, the way these these cases are solved, the way that people are rescued out of that, mm-hmm. is just people noticing something odd and saying something about it. Right. Um, it's, it's something that awareness is critical. Mm-hmm. And I think Part of what it's it's part of maybe my training, but my wiring as well as a as a teacher is really a, about helping people understand. I I just have a kind of a natural interest in this is what's happening. Do you understand? Right. And that's what I did professionally, you know, with math problems, uh, with with relationship problems as a counselor. Right. And and I think now it's it's something I look forward to doing as a senator. Absolutely. Well, Senator, we could sit here and talk about a multitude of issues all day, but I think we're quickly running out of time, and I know you have a busy schedule. So we're going to wrap this up. As you know, part of the tradition here on the Trey Blocker Show is to end each episode with some words of wisdom from our guest, which sometimes guests pull out song lyrics or Bible quotes or, or some words of wisdom of their own. So do you have something you'd like to share with our audience? Well, I, I guess um, two things. You know, my, my favorite Bible verse is from uh, 1 Samuel, and it is uh, the advice that Eli gave young Samuel Mm -hmm. uh, when he was hearing a voice, when he was uh, laying down, and and it is the speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. And I do hope, as I serve in this uh, role as a state senator, that I am listening to um, the the truths of love and mercy that that I've learned um, in my faith right uh, as I've grown up these 56 years to the day I wasn't gonna ask that question and, uh, <laughs> so that that would be one and 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 then I will listen uh, to to the people of Texas right and that I will listen to the advice of people I respect right um, but the other is a quote that I just actually came across in the last month or so. And uh, it's, it, it kind of talks about where I am, too, I think. But it's by Mark Twain. And, and Mark Twain said, and I'm probably paraphrasing rather than quoting, if right. you'll sure. allow for that. Absolutely. The, the two most important days in a person's life are the day they're born and the day they understand why. Mm. That's powerful. Yeah. Right. And so may, may it be for all of us, right? Um, sure. That, that we will live our lives in light of, of the growing understanding of why we were born. Because we all were born for a reason. That's no right. No one's here by accident. That's right. And um, whatever that is, I know 
that at the heart of it, it's to make a difference. It's to love other people and to make the world a better place right. for others. And so um, that's a great thought for me to start uh, my birthday on. And, Absolutely. Uh, anyway, I, I appreciate the, the prompt to, to remember that. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Senator, again, happy birthday. Thank you. Happy Valentine's Day. Thank you. you Thank too. you from, for coming on the show, and hopefully we'll have you, have you back again sometime. Love to. All right. Love to. Thanks, Trey. And thank you all for listening and watching. You can find us at TreyBlockerShow.com, YouTube, and your favorite podcast app. Thank you, and God bless. This has been the Trey Blocker Show. Please subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. And visit TreyBlockerShow.com to donate so we can keep fighting to restore sanity to this great nation.